Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Anton off to as usual and today I've got finally a review for you guys again and actually it's a review of quite an awesome tank we're talking about the T32. Now I'm really sorry that I hadn't uh, that I haven't uploaded a video for almost two weeks now. I just had you know loads of work to do. You know school was falling on top of me. I'm really sorry, but uh, good news is in half a week I've got holidays, so I'll be able to put out say about one video every two days for one and a half weeks. So that's quite good news. But today it's all about this buddy here, the T32, which I must say is probably one of my favourite tanks in the game at the moment. I had a blast of the time playing this vehicle. It's just basically the classic American heavy tank. It's kind of, it's really, it's kind of like an all-rounder, but there's good characteristics in nearly every respect, but doesn't really excel in any one category. And I think that's really cool, because that means that no matter what situation you get thrown into, the T-32 will almost always be able to perform quite well. Uh, if we look at my service record, you will be able to see that actually the T-32 is the one of the tanks which I've been able to do the best up till now. I won't count for Object 416 because as you can see I've only had two games in it so far. So except for that, the T32 is actually the tank which I've been doing the second best in my entire garage. So that is really, really good. That just gives you an impression of how amazing this vehicle is. Because even if you're an absolute idiot to playing World of Tanks, if you'd get into the T32, you should be able to perform quite alright in a game. Yeah, so let's have a closer look at this vehicle to see what exactly makes it that good. We'll start off with a research tree. Now, I'm going to try to keep this review a bit shorter because I've had some comments saying that I make my reviews too long and so on and too detailed. So I'll try to cut down the garage talk and put in more gameplay this time. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to do my best. So uh, maybe I'm going to talk a bit faster and uh, kind of abbreviate some things. So I apologize for that in advance, but you know, I just don't want to make it boring for you guys. You get the T32 if you are heading down to the T125, which in my opinion is one of the best tier 10 heavy tanks, if not the best tier 10 heavy tank in the game, although that particular honour probably goes to the T57 heavy. Now you get the T32 after the T29, which itself was an amazing tank in its tier and probably the best vehicle at tier 7, or at least one of the best. But you know, really after the T29, the T32 definitely isn't a letdown. In my opinion, I actually like the T32 more than the T29, and if you watch my T29 review, you'll know that I like the T29 a lot. Yeah, so when you first research this tank, you will already have the gun, the radio, and the top engine researched from the T29, because really the T29 is nearly, uh, the T29's research tree is nearly exactly the same as the T32's. So uh, it's really a good idea to elite the T29, because that will give you a lot easier grind when you research the T32. Now, uh, the good news is that you can straight away mount the radio and the Continental Tier 8 engine, but the bad news is that you cannot mount the 105mm gun until you research for upgraded suspension. Now, this stock gun, the 90mm, is really not bad. It's the gun that the Pershing gets at Tier 8. I mean, it's a medium tank gun, so it isn't really all that good in a heavy tank, but at Tier 8, it really performs quite alright. Now, up till now, you could maybe think, this tank's going to have a really easy stock grind, because I've already got everything researched on the tank, except for the top turret and the suspension. But, uh, well, it's not quite that nice, because the major issue when you're playing the T32 stock is the stock turret, that only gets 114mm of frontal armour. And that is, uh, that is a real bummer when you're trying to use this vehicle because as soon as people realize that you are stock they'll just start whaffing shell after shell after shell through your turret front and there's not a thing you can do against it so you really want to get this tier 9 turret because that gives you an amazing 298 millimeters of frontal armor and this is one of the best turrets in game tier 4 tier but I'll come to that later when I talk about the armor so let's have a look at this tank stats now, first of all, it gets 1,550 hit points. That is quite good at tier 8. It's basically average. For example, say the T-34 gets 1,500. The IS-3 gets 1,500 as well, I believe. I'll just have a quick look. 
Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so the IS3 gets 1,500. So I'd say that the T32 is kind of really just on the average of tier 8 heavy tank health because if you think of it say the germans with the tiger 2 or the russian kv4 they get 1650 health i think and the kv5 gets some ridiculous like 1750 so it's really just sitting in the middle and i mean 1550 health is just fine really you'll be able to take about five hits at tier 8 with that it's weighs 58.35 tons with my loadout that's actually quite heavy and it means that um, because it gets an 800 horsepower engine which means that it's not really slow i mean it you know it's definitely not fast it's a heavy tank it's not supposed to be zipping around the battlefield at insane speeds but it's not slow and that means that you can really pull off some good ram especially if you're going downhill but you know really ramming is not a uh, essential tactic in this vehicle it's um but still 58.35 is quite a nice weight and you're definitely at the heavier end of the scale with that it gets a top speed of 35 kph now that's really that doesn't sound that good but really the power to weight ratio is quite quite decent for a heavy tank so you will usually be able to reach that speed on level ground the traverse speed is kind of underwhelming at 25 degrees per second and the turret traverse is not that great either at 25 but if you're getting circled you can combine the two and that will add up to 50 degrees per second which should be enough to prevent outflanking by scouts say so really this tank is one of the more maneuverable heavy tanks i'd say it's not like french or even say chinese if we think of the 113 for example but it's definitely you know it is not extremely slow not like not like german heavies yeah this kind of takes us to the armor profile of the vehicle so that's what you head into tank inspect i finally managed to reinstall it on my laptop and um yeah that's kind of take this tank apart and see what it's made of so here's the collision model of the t32 i'm really glad that i got tank inspector working again because i really didn't like uh, what tank view all that much that I used in the meantime but anyway we can see that the armor profile of the T32 really is very interesting we'll look at the hull first um, because it's kind of easier so at the front first of all we've got this big armor zone on the upper glacius that's 127 so just for the sake of argument say it's 130 okay so 130 millimeters at this angle is really good that amounts up to yeah around uh yeah 200 millimeters 190 200 millimeters that is really good if you can angle that about like this that is really really effective armor so you've got some really good stuff going for you here however that is not without weaknesses because you've got this bit here which actually is this this machine gun port it is you see it here in the undamaged model now this actually is not a thinner armor layer but the problem is that it's not angled it's just jutting up from the rest of the profile so that means that uh, the effective thickness is a lot lower only 130 if it's not angled and if it's angled if you hit the machine gun port on the side it's only going to be about 104 millimeters so let's just say 100 so that's quite easy to penetrate usually that machine gun port if you haven't got any other chance of penetrating the tank otherwise of course you can go for the lower glacius which is only 95 millimeters but you know only 95 millimeters for a lower glacius on a tier 8 heavy that's still really good it amounts up to 184 on, and some places even up to uh, over 200 millimeters of effective armor so that is really really good then obviously you've got this really thin layer of armor here 51 but usually nobody will be hitting that you've got vision devices here which have actually got quite in high armor zone but uh, if you hit these you will take out the uh, the optics of a tank which can be useful in some situations next we'll move on to the sides and you know really usually if you think of the typical armor profile of american heavy tanks you always think they've got quite decent frontal armor amazing turret armor and kind of weak side and rear armor but with a t32 that's really not the case because although the raw thickness of the side is only 76 millimeters which can even be penetrated by some high tier he shells you've got these quite big tracks you can see the tracks actually cover up quite a lot of the side of the tank so uh if you hit the tracks that effective thickness is actually a lot bigger and if you manage to angle your tank about this much uh, the sides are really really strong because unless you hit up here or down here 
uh, it's really difficult to penetrate the side. And that means that the T-32 actually is surprisingly good at side scraping, although you usually don't expect American heavies to be that. So the lesson you can learn here is that if you are firing at a T-32 from the front, if he's angling about like this, never go for any armor zone near the tracks. Always aim above the tracks at this part here. So if we look at the collision model again, that would be this zone up here. And then at the rear of the hole, we've only got 51 millimeters. So really that's no obstacle for any shells there. Um, next we'll move on to the front of the turret and this is where it gets really interesting because we can see that there's just ridiculous amounts of armor up here. In the garage, we read that this was supposed to be 298 millimeters. But you know, in truth, this amounts up to like 344 millimeters in places. They see that 607 millimeters. This is absolutely ridiculous. This armor zone on the front of a turret is just so ridiculously difficult to penetrate. This is one of the best armor turrets in the game. If I had this turret on a tier 10 heavy tank, I would still feel quite safe. It's just so, so hard to penetrate frontally. Just look at this. Even if you hit the side armor zone, it's at such an high angle that you'll need 311 millimeters to penetrate. So really, frontally, around the gun mantlet, you cannot penetrate this tank. Uh, however, frontally, it's not without weaknesses because the most obvious turret weakness is the cupola, which is 152 millimeters, which is still quite good and it's angled quite well. So, for example, if you're firing at this cupola in, say, a Super Pershing or an IS-6, one for Russian 122 millimeter guns, you will have very hard, a very hard time penetrating. Uh, if you've got a more accurate gun, you can also try to go for this kind of, yeah, this kind of little I call it a little step here. And it's not very big. Uh, we'll look at the undamaged model. I'm talking about this little, uh, yeah, this little s a bit of armor that kind of sticks up above the gun mantlet. If you can put a shot in here, it's only 76 millimeters thick, and it will penetrate most of the time. But it is really, really tricky. It's a really tricky shot to take. And really, frankly, when you're challenging a uh, hold down T32, say. You will usually, uh, yeah, you will usually come out worse. Even on the sides, the turret is ridiculously well armored. It's got 200 millimeters if you hit the side flush here. Okay, fair enough, 170 at the rear. But I mean, still, that is really, really good. You cannot complain about that. The turret of the T32 is just ridiculously good. And that, for me, is one of the reasons why uh, playing the T32 is such a pleasure. If you can get this tank hold down, and I mean, even if you can just like, usually the turret is a place where most of the shots gravitate to. So if you've got good turret armor, that that's just really, really good. And you know, many people think, oh, the T32, it's an American heavy tank, okay? It's got amazing turret armor, but the hull armor is going to be really weak. Well, that's rubbish. Your hull armor um, amounts up to nearly 200 millimeters of effective thickness if you angle it even more. So uh, that means that uh, penetrating your upper glaciers say is really difficult especially for lower tier vehicles and many players especially new players will think that they can easily slice through your upper glaciers and just put shot after shot through it or try to anyway and it will just ricochet so that is really really useful and all in all in my opinion tier for tier the t32 is probably one of the best armored machines in the game so uh, yeah let's go back to the garage to have a look at the rest of the stats so obviously the next important part about the tank is the gun and it gets a choice of two i've already mentioned this and really the 105 millimeter gun is the one you want to be using on this vehicle now uh, many people will maybe feel a bit kind of a bit betrayed by wargaming for this because actually on the t32 you get exactly the same gun that you were using already on the t29 but because we jumped up a tier now it performs a lot better so you get 5.66 rounds per minute of rate of fire now that is really good for a heavy tank gun i mean it's not amazing but, I mean, if this gun would come anywhere near a medium tank, that would actually be quite a letdown in rate of fire. But on a heavy tank, it's quite good. And it means that even if you miss a shot, you'll be able to reload fast enough to put a second one in. It's not, like, ridiculous rate of fire, 
but it's you know good average re reliable rate of fire which is quite nice and really suits the gameplay style of this tank it only gets 198 millimeters of penetration which is i think i'm not sure about this but i think this is actually the worst penetration of any of the non-premium tier 8 heavy tanks i might be mistaken about this if i am i'm sorry but for example if you think of it the IS-3 gets 200 and I think nearly 250 millimeters of penetration and even the Tiger 2 if you use the 88 millimeter gun at least gets 200 and 204 I think I'm not quite sure I mean 198 is still good enough at tier 8 if you know where to aim you can make most of your shots penetrate but for example if you're going up against higher tier tanks higher tier heavy tanks that can be a bit of a problem but really the, the penetration never was a major issue with me for this with this tank it really is fine for a tier 8 heavy and you know even say the is6 that gets 175 millimeters of pen does fine in tier 8 games so really you shouldn't be complaining with 198 your damage is 320 hit points per shot that is actually quite good that's above average if you think of it for example i'm not sure the kv4 might get 320 exactly but i think the kv4 only gets 300 but i'm not quite sure about that but anyway for example the tiger 2 i mean you can use a 105 millimeter gun but most people i think use the 88 millimeter gun and that only gets 240 damage and then for example the amx 5100 only gets 240 hit points of damage as well so really with 320 you're quite well off the only tank that will have more damage than you at tier 8 is the is3 with 390 then of course some premium tanks but the alpha damage is, is actually really nice in this tank and it definitely feels like a heavy tank punch on the gun for me the next start on the gun is the worst thing about it the 0.41 accuracy which for me is the only real underwhelming characteristic about this tank 0.41 accuracy really means that you have to use this tank at mid to close range actually more close range than mid range even because point four i mean even after the accuracy buff buff and patch 8.6 point four one is still quite trollish because this is a heavy tank and although it's not as slow as heavy tanks go it's still not very fast moving you definitely have to make up your mind right at the beginning of the battle where you want to go head there directly to get dug in get into position so that you don't end up taking long range shots because in long range engagements of enemy tanks unless you can get yourself hold down you will usually come out worse so the aiming time is 2.3 seconds which is quite nice that definitely is quite good on a heavy tank so yeah that's kind of all for the gun in my opinion the gun is quite well rounded it's not amazing in any particular way but i mean that's all right because it's good in every aspect except for the accuracy and you know even the accuracy could be worse i mean i'm looking at the russians here when i say that so really this gun is nice and reliable and usually you will be able to perform really well on it this gun really makes a good compromise between alpha damage and dpm and that's really nice so the view range is also one of the best things about this tank it gets 400 meters of view range that is really nice that's tier 10 standard and if you think of it most tier 8 tanks only get 380 so that's having that 400 meters view range at tier 8 is kind of like having the m48 patterns 420 meters at tier 10 that is really really beneficial and although this tank definitely hasn't got the size or speed to be a scout you can still in one one engagements that can definitely help you to get the first shot off and the signal range is an average 745 so all in all just reviewing the stats in total in my opinion there's nothing bad about this tank there's not a single bad thing about this tank except for the accuracy uh, the other things i mean they don't except for the turret armor they don't really stand out and say hey look at me i'm amazing but they are all decent solid stats that make your tank perform well across the board and that's just the kind of vehicle i really like so to make your tank perform even better you just want to go for a really standard layout of equipment featuring vertical stabilizer vents and the tank gun rammer with this equipment i mean really you shouldn't fiddle around with that setup that's just the best you can get really because it, it just makes 
playing this tank in the heavy tank role a lot more comfortable. For crew skills, you can see I've got quite a well-skilled crew, because this is actually my ex-Super Persian crew, in which I played 500 games or so before I trained it for the T-32. So uh, it's actually quite well trained. I'm on the third crew skill. You can see I first of all went for Brothers in Arms. I wouldn't really do that. If I were you, I would just skill repairs on the entire crew and swap that for Brothers in Arms when it reaches 100%. Or maybe just skill Brothers in Arms as a second set of skills. You want to have six cents as on any tank, really. Then, well, for the gunner, I went with Snapshot, which is really a good idea. You can't go wrong with Snapshot. Driver's smooth riding is nice. Clutch braking might not be bad, but in my opinion, you get bigger benefit from smooth ride. Then for the radio operator, situational awareness is great, just because you want to maximize that great view range advantage that you've got. For your loader, uh, safe storage is really important, especially if you want to carry over your loader to the T-125 in due time because the T-125 has got a real ammo rack problem, so if you've got safe storage already on your T-32, you can't go wrong with that. Also, Adrenaline Rush wouldn't be all too bad on this vehicle, really, uh, because it's got quite a decent hit point pull. But really, I prioritise safe storage over Adrenaline Rush. And then, for your... Uh, for your commander, what I forgot to point out is that really recon would be a good idea too, because uh, you sometimes you will get quite close to the maximum view range of the game, especially if you consider, for example, mounting coated optics instead of one of these pieces of equipment down here. Although I wouldn't really recommend that. So yeah, tactics in the T32 are actually quite obvious. I kind of pointed them out already as well. If you can get this tank hull down or in any way hide your hull or make it difficult for your enemies to hit your hull, you will just own. I mean, the best thing that you can really do, I, I mean, I know I just said a few minutes ago that this tank is no good at long range engagements, but if you can get, if you can. If you can manage to engage your enemies at a range of, say, t about 200 meters, for instance, then they will have real difficulty sniping your weak spots from that range. And if you can get the hull down, you'll be able to just absolutely decimate them if they haven't got cover at hand. So that's one of the best things you can do in your T-32. Alternatively, if you spawn on a location with very few hold down opportunities, you could just play the classic heavy tank role. Go into the city, you can side scrape in for T-32, it's actually quite a viable tactic. And uh, many people will, you'll be able to fool, fool many people into shooting your sides because they think, oh, the American heavy tank with a weak hull armor. But actually, uh, your hull armor is quite sturdy on the sides, even thanks to your tracks. And uh, yeah, you can kind of do that. Just play you can kind of play it a bit similarly to the typical Russian heavy tank like say the IS at tier 7 because you've got decent armor you've got decent mobility and you've got quite a cool gun so just play just basically play the typical heavy tank you should be fine out there so uh, speaking of battles and how to play this tank let's head out to the battlefield and show off the uh, T-32 yeah in some real action so, this year was one of my earlier games in the T-32. You can see I've spawned on Live Oaks, the North American map. And I'm heading out for the city area on uh, yeah on this spawn point. Now, really, where to head in your T-32 is quite controversial here. Because you could argue that if you go along the tracks, you would have quite a few hold down opportunities. Speaking of hold down opportunities, I just realised by the way that I forgot to mention in the garage that this vehicle gets 10 degrees of gun depression, which is just amazing for a tier 8 heavy tank. Uh, that is more gun depression than the M48 pattern gets. That's the same amount of gun depression that the STB1 gets. That is just really, really good, and it really allows you to use your great turret armor to its maximum. Now, uh, what I was talking about though is that uh, the reason why I had, uh, headed for this urban area is mainly that um, the T-32 is a real big target for artillery because it's got that massive engine deck that is really poorly protected. I think it's only 35 millimeters of armor, so really anything can slice through that. And uh, a, uh, artillery just really likes to land HE shells flat on your engine deck, wreck your entire machine, and that's why you really have to watch out. And that's why I prefer to go to the city in this case. Also, if you've paid attention to the map, you may have realized that nearly my entire team went down there. 
so that's not quite that nice. All that nice. So um, that's a real shame there. I would really like to perma track that E for 43. But we didn't quite manage. However, I get an above average damage roll into the side. Now, in my opinion, the T32 is one of these tanks that really excels at uh, fighting lower tier vehicles. Just like the Type 59 does too, for example, over IS6. Because it hasn't got all that amazing penetration. Its armor is alright. Uh, it's really good against lower tier tanks, but doesn't really stick up that well against, say, tier 9 guns. So, uh, that combination just really means for me that uh, fighting tier 7 tanks is probably one of the best things you can do in the T32. Although, maybe that not be the best thing for the team. It, it really helps you get lots of damage and experience. That might sound a bit a bit sadistic in a way, or a bit... Uh, not sadistic, it's not for... Not for the right word, cynical, that's what I wanted to say, yeah. So it might sound a bit cynical, but, you know, sometimes in these tanks you just have to play like that. Because just as there are so many assholes around, you know, really, of course, the T-32 is definitely a good enough, uh, good enough a heavy tank to take on IS-3s and, uh, you know, whatever as well. So, yeah. Now, there you see the... That was quite bad play, actually. I allowed that very dangerous tank destroyer get a big shot to my side taking out my ammo rack so I had to use my repair kit quite early in the game so that actually wasn't very strong play by me right by me right there now I have to be quite careful here because I'm kind of getting surrounded here I mean there's some backup coming in a Hellcat and a T-34 but still I'm kind of on my own I managed to take the front drive wheel so the track off that IS and uh, now he's on low health, so I should be able to take him out with a shot. Okay, great. So that's one enemy less. But now I'm up, still up against two en other ISs. So this is a really, really sticky situation. Um, can I perma track that guy? Yeah, okay. So let's hope that he hasn't got a very good repair crew and that he's already used his repair kit. Or maybe he hasn't got one in the first place. Now, of course, you could go for the other IS. But uh, in this case, it really isn't my interest to, first of all, keep this guy perma-track, which is obviously working quite well, and also to take down this IS here as quickly as possible, kind of co focusing fire, even if I'm only on my own, because that way I'm able to just take enemies out quite a bit more efficiently. Now, right there you could... I'm, what actually... Well, I'm just going to quickly pause it here, because this might have been a bit irritating. What actually happened is uh, I got hit in my rear drive wheel, it seems, from over there. But my rear drive wheel is sticking out behind this building. So there must be the enemy T-34-85 uh, must be the enemy T uh, located somewhere back here, sniping my rear drive wheel. What a cheeky little bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, um, well played, T-34-85. <laughs> that's uh, that's quite cool. I didn't even realize that that was possible. So yeah, you know, you learn new stuff every day. Now, that's a bit of a floskel, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So anyway, although I've taken out two enemy ISs, and uh, although I am on four kills, we're still quite heavily outnumbered in this part of ta of the map. Uh, and <laughs> if I go and make the same mistake again, stupid Antonov, and uh, anyway what I was saying, I'm still heavily outnumbered, usually a T32 against an IS and an IS3, uh, the T32 will usually do, so uh, you can see me side scraping, but it seems like it wasn't, they didn't do me much good there, because the IS and the IS3 both get shot into me, leaving me on very low health, this is the kind of situation in which you would wish that you had adrenaline rush, but I don't, so, uh, yeah, too bad. And okay. Um. Yeah. That was kind of a weird outcome to a game being sniped by a T thirty four dash eighty five from behind the perimeter of the map. That never happened to me before. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't an amazing game by itself. But uh, I think it just really showcased intense city combat in the T-32. And how the T-32 can really dogfight itself 
out of a sticky situation like this and if that sneaky little T34-85 hadn't been there I, you know, I might have still won this engagement. I mean, obviously, we were, I'm quite sure we won this game. I haven't got the post-game stats of this one. But, you know, uh, there's me saying that the T32 is amazing against lower-tier vehicles. And, um, yeah, I suck out against the T34-85. But I've still got two more great games end up for you guys, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, second games on the relatively new map, Windstorm. I am again heading out for this uh, urban stretch of the map on, on the southeast area um, because I hope to yeah find some engagements suitable for the T32. And I haven't really got that much support with me again. This game's actually developing quite similarly to the last game on, on uh, Live Oaks. I've got uh, only a Pershing and a T69 and a Black Prince coming with me and of course an AMX 12 t although I'm not quite sure how much he's going to be able to achieve in the city. So straight away I'm taking a side scrape position right here but then I kind of get bored quite quickly so I just decide you know screw side scraping screw being passive I'm just going to get in there and try to get some damage. So uh, I'm crossing this bridge and turning to the right because I don't really want to what I'm trying to avoid here and oh what a shame I nearly got past that PZSFL but luckily he was using the stock gun otherwise he would have done a lot more damage now what I'm saying here is that I the reason why I chose not to go down that lane directly but go to the right is because if you go into the center of uh, the city or if I had gone into the center of the city in that situation there uh, that would have kind of been like poking a wasp's nest you know it's and um, I basically would have been surrounded by enemies from all sides but because I'm coming along here I basically got all my enemies or I hope to have all my enemies on my left flank so that means that I only have to focus on one side and that makes things a lot simpler for me now you can see me loading an HE round because I really want to get that big damage in. But you can see that my penetration marker is only orange with that PZSFL. So I wait for him to turn into a better position and get a massive hit into him. So that was really nice. It was a real shame that I left him on that low health, 35 hit points. But you know, it's hard to complain if you get a 58, uh, 500 HP damage roll in your T32. So uh, there we go. Off to a quite good start. Clear the town of I first of all thought we'd lose it. So that's quite nice. Now I'm just uh, rolling towards the enemy base. Fair enough, I've lost half my health. And also there's an enemy heavy tank at F6, it seems. I think that Tiger 2 might be AFK. Uh, looks quite like it. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to complain about free experience sitting around in the enemy spawn. And one thing that you should never underestimate with AFK tanks in the enemy spawn point is that although they might not be able to shoot you, they will still spot you for the enemy team. And the enemy team will still see your marker on the minimap. So it's better to take them out from afar than uh, roll out and basically expose yourself to unnecessary enemy damage and fire. So, although we're doing really well, the score is 5 to 6, and the enemy team, like, it's kind of, the situation right now is that we've won the battle for the town, but the enemies have won the battle for the, kind of, ravine in the north. So, that GW Panther just fired off one last uh, desperate shot before he went down. He went down fighting, you know, um... Kind of a shame that I couldn't pick up the kill, but uh, never mind. Kind of capping a bit here, not really the cleverest thing in the world, but really in this situation, the enemy knows pretty much where I am anyway, so um, yeah, not really going to give away any secrets by driving through the cup. Scores 6 to 8, now still not looking very great. So my, my idea right now is to kind of roll up the... Um, yeah, the engagement from the rear and try to hit or get up those enemy tanks trying to capture our our, our base uh, before the cap counter runs out. So, so much for tactics. <laughs> Not too complex. Okay, that was a really good shot there, putting... Uh, 
uh, taking off the tracks of that Carnarvon was actually involuntary, I think. I go for low Glacius there, that's the kind of trollish accuracy. Was very clutch and, you know, with point four one, shouldn't expect too much. I, I, I really tried to get a uh, get a front drive wheel shot into that Pershing. That's why I kind of jiggled a bit and uh, in the end I missed my shot. Get a shot into the Borsik. And yeah, right there, that's just kind of a really good example of, you know, you can always try to pull off those kind of posh tricks, like trying to take off an enemy track. But, uh, you know, if that means that in the end you uh, end up missing the enemy completely and not even taking off the track, you haven't achieved anything. And really, you've just got yourself a massive disadvantage. So, sometimes it's just better to just play simply and plainly than, you know, kind of overthinking and then just making things more difficult than they are. And basically, just uh, making winning a lot more difficult for you in the long term. There's a Pershing. Let's see, can we get shots? Kind of quite dodgy. Yeah. That one wouldn't hit, would it? <laughs> okay, so um, we're capping, and really at the moment it seems like victory is quite secure. If only that T-34 wouldn't be threatening our cap. Uh, maybe you could argue if I had just stayed in the cap circle, we would have captured by now. But if I had defended that corner along with, let's see, is that a T-69? Yeah. Then probably the Carnarvon and Pershing and so on would have managed to interrupt the cap. So, um, what the Carnarvon did manage to achieve, the T-34 did, was setting the cap, and so now it's only at 74. And if it goes on like this, then our enemies are going to draw this game out. But I think it looks like we've got two guys in the cap and our enemy's only got one. So it might just be we win this. But no, I think... Oh, no. I, I think what just happened there is that uh, just in the last second, uh, uh, two other persons drove into the enemy cap, completing the count. If that hadn't happened, we probably would have won this game. Maybe what I should have done there is I should have just gone into the cap circle and capped out. Maybe then we would have won... Not quite sure, but um, let's just have a look at the post-game stats anyway. Okay, so we got quite a ridiculous amount of cash in that game, and also uh, over 2,000 experience, but that was with a premium account. Still in the team score, we can see that we got the most experience and the most damage on the entire team. 4,300 is quite nice in the tier 8 heavy, and of course I was quite... Uh, quite proud of that experience score as well. Yeah, so the detailed report highlights that we fired 18 shots, of which 16 hits, which is actually quite nice considering our quite underwhelming accuracy values. 14 of those 16 shots penetrate, so that's all totally acceptable. Uh, and with only 14 shots, we managed to put out that, uh, dish out that 4,332 hit points of damage. We received 11 hits, of which only 5 penetrated, so that means 6 didn't. So, that is, that's like kind of more or less a, a penetration ratio of about 45%. So that means that 55% of our shots, I'm just kind of, you know, uh, doing these es estimates in my head at the moment, so it might not be 100% accurate. So that's just say 55% of the shots we received ricoch ricocheted. That's a really, really good armor performance. And really in that game, really that was not all that much about using the armor of this tank. Really in that game I was just trying to kind of sell my life as dearly as possible to defend the cap. That was basically was that, what that game was about. And I wasn't really trying to uh, deflect many shots. And although I wasn't, actually not involuntary, but without me actually trying to angle my tank particularly well or something like that, I still pulled off quite a lot of bounces. Um, so that is quite impressive and really, really shows how good the armor actually is on the T-32. And many people actually really underestimate the, the armor values of this vehicle. We received 2,780 potential damage, spotted three enemies, damaged six, and destroyed two, and also picked up 218 assistance damage. So, uh, yeah, one thing that I maybe also should point out at this point is that shell costs are quite high on the T-32. They're above 1,000 per shot I believe so uh, that is uh, not actually uh, looking at this number here it seems like they're slightly below although not do, do you know why this is 
Look, we fired 18 shots, so we have to pay 17,680. But the reason for that is because we fired one HE round, which is cheaper. So I think on average they cost about 1,050 or something like that. So it is quite an expensive tank to run. Luckily, though, there was some kind of special going on, so we got a massive credit bonus. But um, although that game was quite nice, I managed to do a lot better still. So that's heading for the final round in the T32. So you guys might be thinking, okay, you know, anybody can do well in a tier 8 tank in a tier 8 matchup. And all I've shown you up till now are tier 8 games with this T32. So uh, this game will show you what the T32 can actually achieve in a tier 10 game, even though it's got quite underwhelming accuracy values and not like ridiculously great penetration so uh yeah let's just see what we can pull off now straight away you can see i'm heading out for the city and i want to get to this position and i'm really glad that no other tank took it because this is one of the positions one of the few positions in the entire game where the t32 is just basically unbeatable if you can secure this position on runeberg and kind of just overlook this alleyway here you just own now i'm kind of trying to get that really dodgy shot at the cupola the yak panzer e100 not really gonna happen it seems so um you know really it's just gonna take two shots from say that yak panzer e100 say and i'm going to be down so i have to be careful here i'm definitely you know you have to play this tank say and that that applies for all tier 8 heavy tanks for example very differently in a tier 8 game than you would in a tier 10 game because in a tier 10 game you cannot really take hits because any shot can penetrate usually uh, in a tier 8 game you are a lot more of a damage absorber and uh, yeah you can just really afford to take a lot more shots than you can in a tier 10 game so in a tier 10 game you kind of nearly play more like a tank troll like a supporting medium tank maybe you have to just stay behind your heavy high tier pals and just let them do all the hard work and then ninja the kills in the end and although that might sound a bit uh well kind of a bit like kill stealing uh it's kind of the the best way to play your tier 8 tanks in tier 10 games because tier 10 games are a really hostile environment for cute little <laughs> vehicles like our nice T32. So I found my perfect partner in this T110 E3. Um, being quite aggressive around this corner because I know about the E100 is facing the other way. He's kind of slowly realizing that maybe something got around his rear. Genius E100 and oh my god amazing we get an engine fire in an E100 great now well you're seeing this game just keep the back of your head that uh, that you I'm getting a higher experience and credit coefficient for all the damage I'm doing here because I'm doing it against higher tier tanks now many people always really start getting frustrated when they get to do higher tier matchups and start beefing about the matchmaker and so on but, you know, really you should just see it as an opportunity to score a lot better than uh, you would in, say, a tier 8 game. Because you just get in a lot higher experience and credit coefficient. So that's the way I try to look at it. I mean, obviously I get frustrated sometimes too, you know, who doesn't? But um, it just kind of helps to, you know, I find that if you go into a game with a positive attitude, you, you really tend to perform a lot better than if you go into the game with a kind of a really bad feeling for example if you have a losing streak then chances are your next game is going to be a loss too because you've just got this attitude uh, imprinted in your brain that you are going to lose each and every single game in that day and then other days you just win game after game after game and it's just kind of kind of uh, world of tanks psychology i guess <laughs> and yeah, that sounds really weird I'm starting to get a real world of tanks in it now <laughs> Okay, so Object 704 is not the kind of tank you want to have aiming at you. So I'm trying to use this IS-8 as cover as best as possible. And it works because the object... Did, did he bounce? I think he bounced. Yeah, look, this was his shot up there on the turret, wasn't it? I'm quite sure he bounced. So... 
We're capping the enemy base, but the object is heading in to break the cap. Score's 90-10, so things are far from over here. Get a shot into the T-44, nice one there, just before he draws into cover. Helping out my T-110E4 pal, but, uh, you know, every help came too late for that guy. He just got overwhelmed. I was really hoping that that T-44 would poke before the T-34-2 did. So, I really, when the T-34-2 drove around the corner, I just figured, okay, you know, if I get one shot into that T-34-2, it's not going to make much of a difference. But if I remove the T-44's gun from the game, it will. So I just waited and figured that the T-44 would poke immediately after the T-43. And, uh, yeah, that paid off. So I got a second kill. And what you can learn there is that you shouldn't just always take the the first shot at you know the, just the first opportunity you get. You have to wait for the perfect moment. I mean, sometimes of course waiting can cost you a kill, but in other situations, if you wait, it can mean that you you know you just really get the perfect shot off. Now I just arrive in time to break this cap. Really happy about that. My E100 pal gives the WZ120 something to think about. Patton does something quite stupid there, kind of YOLO's around the corner. WZ gets a shot into me, but now I know he's reloading, so I'll be able to get a shot into him before he gets another one off into me. Uh, tracking hit, and now probably the E100 is going to get him. Yeah, there we go. So, um, yeah, that just shows you that, I mean, I had a real... I felt like I had, I mean, I didn't have a carrying role in that game, but I definitely felt like I had quite a big input there. Um, and I feel like I really helped my team uh, achieve victory. And, uh, you know, if I had just given up because I wasn't a tier 10 game at, at the beginning, and, you know, just thought, oh, well, nothing will come of us anyway, then, um, yeah, you know, probably I wouldn't have been able to perform as well as I did. And I think this game just showcased really well, too, that even in a tier 10 game against vehicles like the Jagdpanzer E100, the Object 704, the tanks with ridiculous penetration values, the T-34 uh, can go hold down against them and just really troll them. And no matter how good the penetration is, no matter whether it's an FE 215B183 with armor piercing ammo firing at you, they will not penetrate your turret frontally. No tank can do that. Uh, except for maybe uh, Object 268 before its premium ammo was nerfed. But um, that's out for discussion anyway. So um, yeah, I hope that game was quite enjoyable for you and let's have a look at the post game stuff. So here are the battle results of that game. I was so so glad to finally pick up my ace tanker badge in this uh, in this vehicle because the T32, as you can probably imagine, is first of all a very very popular tank in in the game, and secondly, many people do really well in it because it's such a good vehicle. So it, it is very difficult to get an ace badge in this tank. It's kind of like, for example, getting an ace badge in a tier 10 vehicle. That's usually quite difficult too, or getting an ace badge in tanks like an, a an AMX 1390 or something like that, just because so many people play them and very good players play them too. So in the team score we can see that I needed nearly 1400 base experience to get that ace tanker badge. I did less damage, uh, quite significantly less damage actually, than in the last game, it only came third in damage done, but as I said, because I was damaging higher tier vehicles, I was getting a high experience and credit coefficient, so that's why I got that really high amount of base experience there. In the defect report, we can say I fired 15 shots, of which 14 hit, 13 penned. Quite nice ratio there, doing that 3,575 average, um, 3,575 damage. Received 5 hits, of which 3 penned, 2 didn't, which actually is really good for a tier 10 game, with guns like the Jagdpanzer E100's 17cm beast going around the battlefield. Uh, I received potential damage of 2,820 hit points and spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged 9, destroyed 3 and also picked up 628 spotting or assistance damage. So um, yeah, I hope that game just showcased for you two things. First of all, that the T-32 is an amazing tank. And secondly, that you should never give up hope, no matter what the MM throws at you. Even if you get into a 10 game, you can still pull off an amazing round. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this review and it contains some useful information for you. In my opinion, the T-32 is one of the best tanks I've ever played in World of Tanks. It's just such a 
perfectly rounded vehicle. I really don't think it's overpowered because it's just like kind of an average all rounder. It's average in every in every category, but it's it's still a really really nice machine. It's a pleasure to drive because it just it doesn't feel like kind of awkward or it doesn't feel trollish. You know, you just feel like you've got a sturdy piece of machinery that you can really rely upon in the game to uh, again and again perform the way you want you expect it to. And uh, in my opinion, that's the biggest selling point for T32. So if you enjoyed or appreciated my opinions on this tank that I presented to you in this review, please give it a thumbs up down below or even sub to my channel. And I hope I see one of my next videos. As I pointed out already, I'll be uploading quite a bit, few more videos in the next two weeks, say, because I'll have holidays. So I hope you're looking forward to that as much as I am. And yeah, I just realized that, you know, I said at the beginning of this video that I wanted to keep it shorter, but... Uh, yeah, obviously that didn't work. So sorry for that. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the T32. And uh, also let me know about your thoughts on this review length thing. Do you think my reviews are too long? Do you like them the way they are? Uh, do you think if they have to be shorter, would you like to have more tactics and more actual review and less gameplay or the other way around? Please let me know in the comments because it just makes me, uh, it just helps me improve my content. And also what I would like to know is, uh, yesterday the patch 9.1 test server went live. So I was thinking about making a test server preview, but I looked through the patch notes and found all that many really amazingly exciting changes to the game. So I just figured that it would be kind of boring for you and that you would probably be more interested in the T32 review. If you still would like to have me uh, review the changes of the patch 9.1 test server, please let me know in the comments and I will definitely catch up on that. It will still be live for quite a while. So uh, let me know, but in my opinion, the patch notes just don't look that impressive. So um, thanks for watching as usual. I hope you enjoyed and I hope I see you on the battlefield or maybe in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.